Welcome to our first video on RC electric components and circuits. This series will cover the lithium polymer batteries, motors, speed controls, and a few of the other components and how they all work together from a power standpoint and what that means to your aircraft or your helicopter. We'll be looking at lithium polymer batteries first. And although I did a very crude RC circuit video last year, I am including that for posterity's sake as video number zero. But this is the first one, lithium polymer batteries. By the end of the series, you'll hopefully be more familiar with terms such as KV ratings on motors and discharge rating on lithium polymer batteries, and so on and so forth. Now, this information we hope you'll find useful if you're a scratch or a kit builder, but also if you've built, or I'm sorry, purchased a ready-to-fly kit, because not all your parts are going to last forever. You may want to upgrade or replace an existing part, and this will hopefully arm you with the information you need to make a wise purchase and know exactly what you're getting into when you want to, say, swap out one battery for another or change a motor route. So we'll continue on with lithium polymer batteries. Lithium polymer batteries have been our greatest advancement yet in terms of RC electric power. They weigh less than your nickel metal hydride batteries or your nickel cadmium batteries, and but still supply the same amount of power. Each lithium polymer battery pack that you have really just consists of multiple cells. And one lithium polymer cell, like this here, will only supply 3.7 volts as nominal voltage. When fully charged, the cell supplies 4.2 volts, and that diminishes over time as you discharge your cell. The key point is, is that there is a ceiling and a floor to your lithium polymer cells. The ceiling is 4.2 volts, and the floor is debatable, but at least no less than 3 volts. You never want to discharge a lithium polymer cell past that point. I typically discharge mine at 3.6 volts, and then stop. And that's, that's usually the very lowest I will let a cell go down to. There are a lot of debates online uh, whether or not that's good enough or, or you can go farther, get more out of it, or if it's too much. But typically what you'll notice is that as you're flying, say like a, a Blade MSR, a tiny helicopter that takes one cell, that you'll notice some power loss. And although you could measure your voltage at that point or at least a little bit before that point, you will want to land your craft immediately as soon as you notice a great diminish in your power your power will lessen over time because there's a curve of your, of your power loss and the available voltage to your craft as you discharge the battery. But it kind of evens out for most of your flight. So that first dip might come kind of quick, but that doesn't mean your battery is necessarily fully discharged. There's usually going to be a flat line and then it falls off again. Now, how do you know when you're ready to land? How do you know that your battery has been fully discharged or at least discharged to the point where you want to take it off and then set it to charge later on? Well, there are battery monitors, low voltage cutoffs that you can uh, apply to your circuit. Electronic speed controls, some of them are programmable to cut off voltage at a certain point. What some people do, you can learn, as you learn the craft or the battery in your craft, you can time it in a sense that you fly it for a few minutes, you measure the voltage, you fly it some more, you measure the voltage, you keep track of how long you were flying by the time that your cells reach around 3.6 or 3.7 volts, whatever your minimum may be, that you keep track of how long that is until you reach that point. And then when you fly again, you know, I've got maybe five or six minutes of flight on this helicopter and then I'm gonna land because you don't want to be way up high when your helicopter really has a low voltage cutoff and you lose power. Then you're either going to crash unless you know how to auto-rotate, but even still, it's best to land before you're really going to drop off with your battery's power. Now in general, the more voltage your pack provides, the bigger motor you can run, and the more current that you can pull through your pack, the more you can tax that motor. Lithium polymer cells, these 3.7 volt single cells like this, are usually wired in a certain configuration to provide either more voltage or more capacity. For example, this three cell lithium polymer pack for a, the stock battery for a Blade 400. Let's take a look at your typical characteristics of a lithium polymer battery's configuration with this fill in the blank. You can see here that you've got W, S, X, P, Y, M, A, H, Z, and C. Well, let's figure this out. W represents the cells, number of cells wired in series. X is the number of groups of W in parallel, Y being the milliamp hours of capacity, and Z, discharge rate. So, if you take a stock battery that comes with my Blade 400, you'll see the characteristics filled in as follows. 3S1P, 1800MAH20C. We'll break this down into pieces, these three parts, the cell wiring, capacity, and discharge rate. Cell wiring. The S and P stand for series and parallel, respectively. Your most basic battery packs are one or more LiPo cells wired in series and have no batteries wired in parallel. 
which is why the 1P is often dropped from the descriptions. It's assumed. Look at this diagram of the same battery in terms of individual cells. Your smaller helicopters like the Blade MSR and Park Zone Vapor use one single LiPo cell. That's 3.7 volts. 4.2 fully charged. Every time you add a battery in series, it increases the voltage by 3.7 volts. So a Blade CX-3 coaxial helicopter, which takes a 2-cell, that is 2S1P, LiPo pack, uses 7.4 volts, while the Blade 400, which takes a 3-cell, or 3S1P pack, yields 11.1 volts. Wiring cells in parallel doesn't increase the amount of voltage, but it does increase the capacity of the battery pack. A 3S2P LiPo pack actually contains 6 cells, 2 pairs of 3 cells wired in series, and each group of 3 wired in parallel. So now you know what the S and the occasional P mean when describing a battery. That defines your voltage as well as your capacity based on the single cell's value and how it's wired with other cells of the same type. Capacity. This battery pack has 1800 milliamp hours of capacity available. Think of capacity as your fuel tank. The larger the capacity, the longer you can fly, but also the more weight a battery will have. So it's another give and take example. Since wiring in series like this battery pack doesn't increase our capacity, but it does increase our voltage. Each individual cell has a capacity of 1800 milliamp hours and is wired in series for 11.1 volts. The term milliamp hour describes how many amps would fully discharge the battery in one hour. Our 1800 milliamp pack would be fully discharged in one hour if we pulled exactly 1.8 amps or 1800 milliamps through the pack, i.e. the load on the circuit. Now, 1.8 milliamps isn't enough to really drive a helicopter, so say a helicopter needs 14 amps, that's 14,000 milliamps to fly properly. This means we'd only have about 7 minutes worth of time until the pack is discharged, although you don't fly to complete and total discharge. You arrive at that value through this equation, capacity divided by load times 60. That will give you the time in minutes until full discharge. Just remember that changing a battery for one with higher capacity gives longer flight time, but also adds weight, which in turn increases your load on the circuit, since the motor has to work harder. So, in this example, our capacity is 1800 milliamp hours, divided by the load, and in this case, say our helicopter is going to pull, on average, 14,000 milliamps. You take 1800, divide it by 14,000, times 60, and you get about seven minutes or so worth of time before your battery is discharged. Discharge rate. This magical C rating is defined as how fast you can discharge your battery safely. A higher C rating means you can pull more amps through your circuit before the battery starts taking damage. You'll often see a burst rating as well included with C rating, which of course means maximum power output for say around 10 seconds or so. You definitely don't want to run your craft continuously at this level of power output. Now to figure out what C rating itself means, let's say if 20C is our discharge rate like our example battery has, we need to know the capacity of our battery to determine the true amp discharge that's safely available. Take your capacity, multiply it by your C rating. That is the maximum amperage discharge you'll want to have during your flight. So your total amps are really defined by your capacity and your C rating because the C rating is 20 times your capacity. So our 1800 milliamp hour 20C battery supports no more than 36 amps being pulled through the battery safely. That's capacity multiplied by C rating, then divide by 1,000 if you want amps. If you want milliamps, don't divide by 1,000. 36 amps continuously would drain a battery right quick, but you definitely don't want to go over that amount, especially if that's your burst rating. Most of the time, you're not drawing full C rated amperage through your circuit, and if you are, then definitely take heed of the possibility of reducing your battery, battery pack's lifespan and inherent risks. However, C rating is often seen as a marketing gimmick because, of course, the higher the C rating, the better the battery, right? Well, with that in mind, don't necessarily trust your life with C rating alone. If you have a spiffy enough battery charger, you can actually graph and track discharge rates and determine the proper rate for your battery. That's more than we want to cover here, so let's generalize by saying, take the C rating with a grain of salt. It all comes down to whether your battery manufacturer is honest or not. Always consider a Google search of your battery's make and model. Someone may have already done tests on that specific battery for you. But as a whole, take the C rating, multiply it by your capacity, and you'll have your max amps that you'll want to have put through your circuit, at least for any specific amount of time. Now a great tool for measuring that voltage and amp draw is a watt meter. This takes the marketing out of the picture. We'll cover these more in later RC circuit articles in the series, but nevertheless, they are extremely valuable in determining how much current you're really pulling through your circuit. Take the three parts of lithium polymer battery characteristics that we just discussed, cell wiring, capacity, and discharge rate, and you get an idea of what differentiates one lithium polymer battery from another. Now, when you're talking about the cell wiring, of course, series gives more voltage, parallel gives more capacity, combinations of both give more of each. 
Your capacity is your fuel tank, that's how long you can really fly, and your discharge rate, combined with your capacity with that equation, gives you the number of maximum amps that you'd want to pull through a battery safely. If you pull more through the battery than it should be able to handle, then you risk puffing a cell, possible explosion, definitely overheating your battery, and reducing your lithium polymer battery pack's life span. I'm Eric R. Kristoff of Hover and Smile. We'll continue with our next video series of RC circuits and components quite soon. This has been Lithium Polymer Batteries.